Hello guys, this is the video on the review for the previous live session, Minerning Institute Paper 1, 2021. Okay, so after doing some marking and yeah, checking my previous solution during the, um, for the live session, right? This time around, I got 70.5. So it's still a far stretch from 90%. Now. Okay, but then um, that was originally um, part of the reason why I want to do this video. Okay, is to show that, that sometimes, um, yeah, <laughs> you just don't get our expectation. And I find that a lot of students, when they don't hit certain expectations, they start to, I don't create. I feel that like this is the moment where either you subject yourself to more negativity, right? Or you just learn to, I don't know, still cherish what is within, still cherish your ability. Yeah, what your, your potential inside, okay? And continue to embrace uh, the journey. And yeah, a, a lot of students, they, they don't do well for mid-year prelims. Then they start forming all this negativity within themselves and stop honoring like the existing knowledge you have, the um, process that you go through. Uh. Okay, so yeah, that's why I'm putting myself out there saying that, hey, I'm going to get 90% and showing that, hey, I feel the first time I feel again, feel again, feel again. Why well, eventually succeed? I really so. But in order to do that, I need to. You guys will understand as you watch along the way, I need to be very, 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 I don't know, it, it, perform at a very high level. Yeah. And the condition is against me, uh, especially whenever I teach for the whole day, whole of Saturday morning, afternoon. And after that, I need to come and um, do these three hours until 10 plus, 11 plus with you guys. So I don't know how this will turn out, uh, if it turn out well, but yeah, that's, I feel that that's a second area. Okay. The main goal is still to show you guys, um, the nitty gritty, the intricacy of how to dissect a question, how to form multiple approach develop multiple perspectives in order for you to solve the question efficiently. Okay, so, okay, without further ado, let's review uh, the mistakes that I have made. Okay, so first question, right, I forgot to put the modular sign. That's why... That's why I, um, yeah, minus myself one mark because uh, long need to be performed on a positive number. Okay, that's why I minus myself one mark. And this will never be a negative number because, yeah, um, this will never, sorry, not this, right? Okay, if you go and, this will never, oh, this can be zero. Okay, so yeah. Um, Let me see. Okay, the graph will look something like this. Okay, the reason why I write this right is, um, yeah, I want to show you guys that um, this thing has a chance of get being positive and negative, uh, okay, and it also have a chance of being zero. Uh. So uh, the being zero, right, uh, usually uh, we never consider too much, okay, usually we will just write uh, this thing as small, uh. although um, if x is negative too, right, this thing is still uh, not solvable. But I don't know why. Uh, in the syllabus, we just uh, I think we overlook that uh. Okay, so moving to our next question. Okay, my stuff is a bit disorganized. 
Okay, so the question, second question is correct. I said that I thought I made a very dumb uh, execution. Okay, so over here, right, we could have just expand the brackets and then uh, deal with the constant straight away. That's, yeah, you see a lot of times I will say, I will tell students, hey, you need to observe the form, etc. Okay, but then when the pressure gets to you, you are just trying to finish everything. This is the thing that happened now. Okay, so next question. Okay, so for the next one, uh, the du dx is correct, and then the what's that called? The differential solving the differential equation is also correct. Okay, so for this one, right, uh, the mistake here, okay, yeah, then, okay, maybe just let me explain a bit what I do during the live session. Okay, for the part one, part two, and part three is correct. The um, um, interpretation is uh, length of projection, then after that, um, Part two, it shows that uh, we calculated that mod of 2a minus b is equal to 2. And after that, we also successfully find c. La. Okay. The only thing that is wrong, right, is part four. So try to, I will rewind to uh, last Saturday what I was doing, right? Okay. I was saying that a, because they give us uh, angle uh, a, o, b, right? So maybe we should do this so that we, after that, we can split this up to angle AOC plus angle COB, etc. Okay. But then doing this right will result in cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So the cosine, cosine, sine, sine will require uh will, will naturally mix one thing of uh to a castle, uh. Okay. So after when I think of to a castle, right? Now after that I thought that e like that should we do this thing easier, ma? Okay, just by considering it as uh, uh, from a total perspective. Uh, okay, but the assumption that I make, right, is that this thing is a 90 degree. Uh, it may not be 90 degree. So if it's not 90 degree, right, the whole thing that we are doing, right, is wrong already. Okay, so for example, it can be like this, like this. The ratio is still 1 is to 2. Okay, but then uh, it is not a 90 degree. Okay, that's why um, it was wrong to do it in this manner. Okay, so after that, um, think about how else can you do it. Yeah, that's why a lot of times, like, you guys need to develop a lot of approach. This kind of question is so obvious, like cosine AOC and cosine uh, COB. You, I, could, I should have easily thought of all the uh, dot product uh, definition. Yeah. So it, it requires you guys to think of a lot of approaches. Okay. And also like you need it, that you need to have that attention to details, right? To like spot even this kind of assumption that you are making up. Huh? Okay, so um if you guys are interested or if you guys really really want to improve your grade, these are the small, small things and the small understanding that prevent you from all the mistakes okay so anyway um using the dot product proper uh, definition so this thing um just i did some working here yeah but i'm gonna do it again for the explanation so here is o here is a here is c here is b okay so for this to for you to calculate this right you need to the two vectors right need to be diverging or converging the two vectors that encapsulate this angle right need to be diverging or converging okay so this angle we are referring to is here so either you use uh o a and o c or you use a o and c o okay so i'm going to use o a because that's most direct because all of the things they give you is 
oh, usually they give you OA la, O something la, okay, and OC. Okay, so over here uh, is uh, OC dot OB. Okay, but then you know that dot product is communicative, so later I will just uh, swap them. Okay, so this, so what is OC? OC is uh, what we found here, right? So as a result, here will be A dot bracket 2 over 3 A plus. 1 over 3 b over so they mentioned that a is a unit vector so i would just um, write oc here whereas this one is um, 2 over 3 a plus 1 over 3 b uh, dot b over mod oc times length of b which is equal to 2 okay so uh, this thing i need to point out that some students they may fumble right when they say a o c how, how to mod this o c will they will they affect anything later la? okay so sometimes you need to have a more overall perspective that you are trying to you are not trying to solve everything you are trying to prove these two are equal okay that's why if we want to prove these two are equal right they um, your OC can remain there at the end and both of them can still be equal okay so simplifying this thing equals to 2 oh, third a dot a okay just think of it element wise okay a dot a right is gonna be mod a square Okay, and because A is a unit vector, right, so it's just going to be 1. Okay, and then plus 1 third B dot, uh, A dot B. Okay, so if you want to be particular, right, this one need to times this one, that's why it's a A dot B. But we also know that A dot B and B dot A is interchangeable, not unlike A cross B and B cross A. Okay, but I'm going to put A dot B anyway. Lah. Okay, so over... Uh, 2 over 3 a dot b plus 1 third so over here right b dot b is um b dot b right okay it's gonna be the um modulus of b square okay so um which is the length of b square okay so it's gonna be 4 here over 2 mod oc as a result, equals to uh, 2 third plus 1 third a dot b divided by mod oc equals to 1 third a dot b over mod oc plus 2 over 3. Okay, so this means that we show that angle cosine AOC equals to cosine angle COB. Okay, what you need to do here, right, is that you need to say since angle AOC and angle COB is R acute. Okay, why are they acute, right? It's because if, let's say, let's say, okay, this one maybe, okay, maybe they form really an obtuse angle, right? Okay. No matter how big it is, right, it will be less than 180. So, if you go and half them, right, okay, they're gonna uh, become less than 90. Okay, so I just gonna put that they are acute, right? Um, since both of them are acute, that's why your angle AOC right will be equal to your 
angle COB. As a result, your uh, line OC will bisect uh, angle AOB. Done. Okay. So, yeah, why you need to say this, right? Why cannot just say they are equal, right? Because cosine ASTC, right? Okay, A and C. Your here can be 30 and here can be 330 in degrees. Uh. As a result, right, like this might not need to be equal to this, even though your cosine is the same. Okay, so there is mark in this and you do need to think of. Okay, so that's it. Uh, moving on to the next one. Okay, so this question is also correct, but again, I never put these modulus. So yeah, long always put modulus, unless you know that for sure this thing is a positive. Uh. Okay, I know that this thing for sure is a positive, but this could be a negative that eventually make everything to be negative. I mean the value of x, uh, okay, not the coefficient of x, the value of x. You could substitute something that is negative that eventually make everything to negative. Okay, so other than that, uh, it's correct, which I was really confident because we did some check um, during the live session and those checks are very important. Uh. So if you miss it, please go and watch because it's about how to really, really secure the 90%. Okay, after that, this six part one, right? I remember in the live session, I was talking about all oh, in, when drawing a graph, you must draw your X, you must draw your Y, label your X, Y. I say three things, right? Label X, Y, label origin, and label graph, okay? And <laughs> I want to, I don't kill myself, right, for not uh, doing this, uh, okay? So, um. That's why it's always about that oscidiousness that you need to execute when you do a paper. Okay, moving on. Okay, number seven, right? I made another uh, mistake, okay, of minusing this thing. Okay, minusing this thing as a result, I should minus n because uh, one plus one plus one plus one. Then minus, eventually I will get this. As a result, right, because I was trying to calculate this thing, right, then there will be an error carry forward of this um, thing not being the correct uh, value. Uh. Okay, but I feel that uh, over here, right, one of the marks is uh, given to you being able to know that it's a method of difference and being able to correctly uh, as, uh, solve the method of difference. Okay, that's why I still credit myself one mark for this. Yeah, and minus one mark here because the answer is not the same. Okay, next. Okay, so this thing I felt that I was pretty lucky, okay, because I got the graph wrong, but then eventually uh, it didn't trigger downwards. Uh, but because it's very easy for, I don't know, uh, all this to, uh, to need or uh, to require uh, the some information here, la, okay, but luckily uh, not super related. Okay. Okay, so over here, right, your graph, when you put inside your calculator, right, it will look super weird. I put, I think it will look something like this. Let me see again. Yeah, it will look something like this. Then after that, uh so you guys really need to have certain knowledge in your graph, in your trigo functions. Uh. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay, uh, the range of t is, is like this. Okay. So let's start, the, oh, the mistake that I made, did I mention, okay, over here, right, it's supposed to be cotangent t. I put cosine t, uh. that's why the whole thing is wrong. Okay. So let's look at the X and Y individually in order for you to be able to know how, what is going on, what is really going on here and what is really going on here.
Okay, so uh, just now I put in my calculator, right, the window, right, of t, right, to be between minus pi over 2 to 0, including the 0 and minus pi over 2, right? That's why my graph is so weird, okay? I readjust my window, and then I put this one inside, then I plus a bit, I don't know, 0 0.001, and this one I also minus a bit, okay? Then after that, my graph turned out like this, huh? Okay, so that's a little trick that you guys can use. Um, other than that, um, go and observe when your uh, TR tends towards uh, 0, uh, when your T tends towards uh, negative pi over 2, right? Okay, uh, what will your X and Y behave? Uh? Okay, so I can talk about it here. Okay, when your T tends towards um, 0, negative, right? Think of how your cosine, uh, your uh, tangent will behave. Okay, tangent t right is gonna tend towards also a bit, uh, very close to zero, negative of zero. Okay, as a result, right, cosine t right is gonna tend towards negative infinity. Okay, so means that your Cosine plus cosine t plus two uh, okay is also going going to tend towards negative infinity. That means your x going to will go to negative infinity. Okay, while looking at here, right, when your t tends towards negative pi over two, cosine. I'm I'm going through y now, uh, okay, because uh, secant is one over cosine. Uh. Okay, so your cosine t, cosine graph look like what? Cosine graph look like, um, like this, right? Okay, so it will repeat. And then here is pi over 2, negative pi over 2, then here is 0. Okay, when it tends towards uh, negative pi over 2, right, your cosine t, the value is going to tend towards 0 minus, and then your second t will tend towards negative infinity. As a result, your y will tend towards wait, can I do something wrong? No, when t tends towards this, right, then uh, your cosine t will be very close to because um, it's more is more than negative uh, pi over two, okay. That's why your this thing will tend towards the positive side of the zero, and then this thing will tend towards negative. Uh, this thing will tend towards infinity, okay. Um, what I'm trying to say is, okay, this thing will be 0 0.0001, you divide 0 0.0001, positive, right? Okay, will be something very big, okay? So your y, y is going to take the value of uh, infinity, okay? So while t is equals, to, t is very close to 0 on the negative side, right? Okay, and then t is very close to negative pi of but to right where seen how will x behave actually i should yeah i should continue with uh looking at the y here how it behave and do x how it behave here and then do y but anyway uh, let's continue okay so when uh this one tends to zero minus your cosine t is gonna tend to very close to one okay as a result your y is 1 over 1, okay? So it will tend to, okay, 
imagine these are one divided by 0 0.99999. Okay, why is it one divided by 0 0.999? Because your, we are thinking of value here. Okay, so one divided by 0 0.9 will be 1.0001. 000 000 000 000 000 000. So it's slightly bigger than slightly bigger than y. Okay, that's why when x tends to negative infinity, right, your y will be very, very, very close, but it will not touch y equals to 1. Okay, after that, uh, let's observe the x here, when t tends towards uh, negative, when it's somewhere around here. Okay, then your observe x, your tangent t, Okay, so when this one tends towards this, this one, okay, is going to tends towards negative infinity. Yeah? So cotangent T will tends towards one divided by negative infinity, right, will be negative 0 0.001. Okay, you guys don't have to write this, huh? just do it on the side. Okay? That's why my working is also not super uh, official kind of way of presenting. Okay, but then just get a hint of how next time if the calculator give you something weird like this, how you're gonna. And also, it's also like a, more of like a teaching of. Uh, how to observe these functions and how to interchange between x and y, which is going to be a very useful skill uh, okay, when you try to solve a function. Okay, so anyway, this thing will tend towards like that. That's why your uh, this thing plus 2, right, okay, will become slightly less than 2. That's why the graph will behave like this when y tends to infinity. Okay, so that's our explanation. Okay, uh, in exam, if this is too overwhelming, right? Okay, just do what I suggested just now. Okay, so this part done. Really fast, number 8 really. Okay, number 9. Okay, so what this one is cost me quite a bit, uh, cost me 4 marks. Imagine I try to get 19 then minus 4 marks straight away. Okay, I give myself one mark, right, because um, the, I know that the other roots is uh, minus one minus i. Uh, okay, because of like, the conjugate uh, for when the coefficient are all blue. Okay, so um, what did I did wrongly here, right? Okay, is this thing, right, I thought it's a 2 when it's a z. Okay, and that's where everything go haywire. Uh. Okay, so anyway, back to... Uh, this question right over here it will it should be equals to z square plus two z plus two times three z um plus seven okay so just do a bit of check to make sure that this and this tally up okay so here is already 14 uh, z then after that you plus 6 z is going to be 20 z then after that z square like that like that z square then like that like that okay so 7 z square and plus 6 z square going to give you 13 z square okay so they are correct okay so your last uh, roots will be z equals to minus 7 over 3 that's all Okay, as a result, right, um, I don't know whether I would get much mental marks here. Maybe a bit of marks when I form this thing, I don't know. I think over here, definitely this one is one mark. Maybe then your answer is another one mark. But okay, never mind, just my history. Okay, and then the last part I was saying that uh, is about how you gonna change, relate this thing, right? Okay, with your original uh, this thing, uh, how you're gonna relate them together. Okay, so I was 
saying in other video that oh, your all this can replace with something else, right? But your this thing, no matter what you replace, right, it's not gonna look like this form. Okay, that's why I made an effort to chip, divide this all the way until it's 14 to look more like this thing. And then after that, based on observation here, I decided uh, to substitute this Z with uh, what with this in order to make it into this. Okay, so anyway, uh, I got minus one mark because I minus myself one mark because I feel that uh, just because I lack this information. Other than that, that execution is correct. Okay. Okay, moving on. To, to, to minus one mark for two part three. Okay, this one is I feel is a very is a very dumb mistake. Okay, I sh really should be more careful. Okay, so like this the one mistake cost me <laughs> four marks. Okay, that's why I keep telling you guys if you guys. Sometimes you guys think that you study well, etc. Right? But when it comes to exam, right, it's about whether your mind is focused and sharp enough. Right? It's about that. Yeah. That's why I always say students who are very detailed and who are very driven and very fixated about doing things a certain way, very being very particular, they are usually the one that will do well. Right? Okay, because exam rec really, rec really require that excuse. Yeah, so anyway, over here, right, okay, should be a times, okay, because uh, e, to, e to the power of like that, then e to the power of like that. Okay, that's why it's a times, times this thing, and this thing is equal to v over r, okay. As a result, everything got triggered down, uh, okay, so this one, if this one is a, when this one is a times, Okay, you become i equal to just a constant and then like that. Okay, so the asymptote will be equal to zero. That's why my graph is wrong. And then this one tends towards zero. Also, it's wrong. Okay, so uh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys understand? Like, you guys think that uh, if you roughly understand this chapter, you, it's going to get you this mark. Uh, I, understand this chapter that chapter can do get, get in this part no uh, it's about whether can you execute at that level is what gonna make the jump in the marks uh. okay so yeah be aware of it and work on it okay last question okay. sorry Okay, last question is where <laughs> um, there's too much information that then I got so confused with what's going on. Okay, I feel that the key information I miss out, right, is this thing. Okay, so um, it's a bunch of mess here and just know that um, why I didn't execute correctly is because I didn't consider this uh, information. So let me do this with you guys. Okay, so like have to take note of all the at the end uh, on the first day, etc. Okay, as a result, usually I will um, present my answer in two columns. Okay, one is at the start, one is at the end. So this one. Okay, so start. So he already paid, I, I don't know, 1, 4, 5, 0, 0 already, right? Then he graduated. Then at the start of the graduation, at the 
just after he graduate the next day, okay, upon graduation, right, okay, and then they charge on the first day, okay, so on the 1st of January, right, the amount that he owe is going to be charged interest, okay, and because he always pay back on the last day of the month, that's why it looks something like that. Okay, so what do these figures represent? Right? Is the amount he still owe the bank, the amount outstanding loan, outstanding loan. Okay, so if this is the outstanding loan at the end of Jan and bank charge at the start of every month, at the to write this. Um. Okay, I will just start and then here January. Okay. Now after that, February. Is this amount that he still owe that subject to uh another um zero point three percent interest? Okay, so this one is the total amount that he will owe on end of February. So after that, the total amount he pay off this total amount he pay off nine hundred again. Okay, so yeah, I want to simplify a bit. Okay. So here it will become three pi three six five oh oh times one point zero zero three square minus nine hundred times one point zero zero three. Then over here will become three six five oh oh times one point zero zero three square uh, minus nine hundred times one point zero zero three minus 900 okay so you guys can roughly see certain pattern okay initially this one is um, power one then it become power two then after that initially just minus this thing then now become um, minus another one okay if you are not sure just do it uh, really just do that okay i mean if you don't know the exactly what's the pattern though anyhow to a power cube etc okay do it again which is what i will do uh. okay so start of this thing right will be uh three five two six five this amount okay subject to another times one point zero zero three so i just gonna times it straight away because i got no space So just times everything by, by 1.003 lah. Okay, so that. Whereas this one is just uh, the this thing minus 100. Okay. Minus 900. Did I say 100? Okay, fine. Okay, so after that, we calculate out uh, because they say last day of the third month he graduate, and we calculate out is uh, three one three four one two one. Uh. Okay, so show. Okay, moving on, part two. Can you see that like this thing, right? This, just this thing, right? Cost me how many marks? Uh, nine, 12 marks. Okay, so it's uh, easily one grade. 12 marks is one grade, right? Yeah. 
uh, depends on whether you are in the B range or the D range. Okay, so part two, um, geometric. Okay, so that's why you must always be very clear with all these uh, expression that you have. Okay, so just now I say that all this amount is the outstanding loan. Okay, but, um, yeah, all this is outstanding loan. Okay, so use a formula of the okay. So when you see it here is February, right? Okay, the formula looks something like this. Okay, and here power one. Okay, when it's March, right, it becomes three, then two, then one. Yeah. So uh by the time because March is cute, ma. March is the third month, ma. Okay, then after that, uh, yeah. So we want to find an expression the the last day of n month. So much is three. Then, uh, n month will be like that, oh. <laughs> okay, and then after that minus nine hundred. We get one point zero zero three m minus 1 okay keep on minusing until it is minus 900 okay so uh yeah so we still can simplify this because over here right if you guys can see it's a gp because m minus 1 m minus 2 so divide by 1.003 divide by 1.003 yeah but i'm not comfortable with dividing I gonna rearrange everything and see another way. So become like this minus nine hundred okay and then plus nine hundred times the first okay then all the way to Okay, so over here, what do we do next? Uh, if uh, GP formula, right? Yeah, this one is the end should be here. So GP formula first term, and then ratio, and minus R my r to the power of n so the number of term here right because here is 1.003 to the power of 0 uh. so 0 to n minus 1 right is the same as i shift everything by 1 so 1 to n so that's n terms here okay so here n after that minus 1 over 1.003 uh, minus 1 okay as such you will get 3 Okay, because you are to the power n, then you cannot do anything to it. And then this one you calculate out, it will be three hundred k. Okay, so this is the first part, the expression. Then hence find the which one he pay off. Okay, so imagine the amount is uh, 36500, then decrease, 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 decrease. We are trying to find the time where it suddenly becomes negative. Okay, because when it's positive, right, you still haven't paid off, ma. And, uh, and, uh, just before it, you still haven't paid off. When it turns negative, that month is the month that okay. Okay, we, we, so we put this inside the calculator, right? Okay, and then we will find that this is n over then you can write this thing 
that, that, <laughs> I'm not gonna write it, okay? Uh, I'm cause I'm lazy, <laughs> okay? Now after that, over here, it will be 43, 44, 45, based on your observation in your calculator. Sorry, uh, my, I know my handwriting is horrible. I think this is minus 152.4. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Okay. So um yeah. So by the 43rd month you end of 43rd month you still owe this amount. That's why it only makes sense for you to really really clear it on the 44th month. Okay? So 44th month. Okay, after that. Total interest that I'll be paid. Okay, can you guys understand that uh, the total interest, right? Okay, is the total amount he paid minus away the amount he borrowed. Okay, so at the start, so so at the start of education, the cost, right? He always pay. $200. Okay. So 200 then he he pay for three years. So times 36. Yeah, let me recall the question. Oh no, there's an increment 200 and 210, etc. Right? And 220, etc. Okay. So, anyway, uh, we know that um, at the start of the. When you go to work, uh, at the start, okay, he left with 36500. Because yes. um, that's the part one answer, mark. Okay, this answer. Okay, that means that um, during his course of study, right, he already paid this much. Okay, after that, right, every month, right, he pay $900, okay, for how many months? For 43 months, okay. Now, after that, the last month, uh, he was, he still, the for, end of 43 months, he still owe this much. And then the bank will charge him this amount, okay. So, yeah, this should be the amount that uh, he paid in total. Not the interest, uh, the amount he paid in total. So, he paid a total of uh, 5, 2, 4, Seven seven point three seven. Okay, so five two four seven seven point three seven minus the amount he originally owed, which is fifty k, is gonna give you two four seven seven point three seven. Okay, done. Okay, so just now we have uh, this thing, right? I should have used real, sorry. Okay, just now we have this thing. Okay, so now they are saying that, right, The he want to finish the loan, right, uh, three years upon graduation. Okay, so this end will be 36. And then how much? Do we need to pay per month after graduation? So this one become an unknown. Okay. So yeah, no space. <laughs> Give me a while.
Okay, so three six five four o times one point zero zero three to the power thirty six minus this is something that you want to find out how much you need to pay per month. Actually, um, we should use this. Sorry. Oh, cannot pass this one. So we're gonna use this. Over uh, 0 0.003. Okay, so you calculate out, then you. So this thing, right? Okay, we are interested in the time where this thing, okay, reach zero, uh, reach a uh, negative. Okay, because before that, I have a pay finish. Once negative means pay finish already. Yeah, let me think. No, no, this thing is, this thing represents what? Yeah, amount O, amount O, yeah, so it will be less than zero in order to finish this payment. Okay, so you do some manipulation here. Um, Eventually, you will find out that x is more than equals to 1071.14. Okay, so minimum amount to the nearest dollar he need to pay, he need to pay at least, because if he pay this amount, right, okay, it will just nice, okay, but then if we are talking about nearest dollar, it cannot be uh, 1071, because he won't be able to pay by three years, okay, so minimum he need to pay is equals to uh, one zero seven two. Okay, so that's it for the review. And then, if you guys find it helpful, please share it with your friends. And sometimes, uh, I cannot address concern of every student. Okay, that's why you guys, uh, if it's beneficial for, uh, if if there are things that you guys still couldn't understand or need me to go at a slower pace, um, yeah, you can contact me below for tuition. Okay, so that's all for today and I hope that this video helps you and if it benefit you, please like and then share it with your friends and comment. That's all I'm asked for. Okay, that's all. Okay, bye-bye.